Hey guys, in today's video I want to give you my final review of the Bob Jones University Science 2. This is their third edition science for second grade um, and these are the components that we purchased. We purchased the student text and this is the text that the student is supposed to read along with the teacher. Activity manual answer key which was kind of pointless for us. We did not use this. The activity manual worksheets, um, we used all of them, so very important. And then the teacher's um, edition. I really like the teacher's edition. Um, I did not find any use for the CD. I know that's a big thing with Bob Jones, but I'm finding that I don't really use much of the resources on these CDs. And I do have Bob Jones Bible and Heritage Studies too, and I just never really pull this up out maybe once or twice so um, but it is filled with worksheets and different things and I actually did use it one time for science to print out some metamorphosis um, songs so that each of my kids could have um, a printout of the lyrics okay so let's start with what you learn all right so there's 12 chapters here there's 80 lessons and these are all of the things you'll be learning this year after each chapter you do a project i noticed that the projects um, throughout have been super easy there have been times when i haven't prepared or forgot that there was going to be a project right after the chapter and i've just had the things laying around and was able to just on the fly make a project happen so I love that about BJU science is that everything um, is just laying around your house most likely and you don't go have to go crazy trying to get a kit or um, a super expensive kit because sometimes I know they can be super expensive. Um, for example, here is one of the projects. You get two reusable plastic bags, a paper towel, a spray bottle, and four seeds. I mean, you can go to the Dollar Tree and get a package of seeds for less than a dollar. Um, super inexpensive stuff. This project did not work for us. I think um, my fault. <laughs> I didn't really pay attention to how my kids were doing the project at first, so it didn't work. But uh, we followed this up with the bean plants and those worked beautifully. They grew beautifully and I'll pop up a picture here so you can check those out. So here's the frog life cycle, the butterfly life cycle. This is really nice project to do. Um, if you get the caterpillars in like we do every year, we watch them grow and change into butterflies. So this is not a new um, sort of uh, experiment, um, but we like to refresh every year and just talk about how the metamorphosis happens. And it was nice learning about frogs this time too. Chapter three, how plants grow. Again, a super easy um, bean plant project at the end. Where Things Live, this was the chapter on habitats. And we learned about different environments. And they made a habitat at the end. Again, the habitat had about, I wanna say five um, so a book, a resource book about habitats, a shoebox, craft supply, and the activity manual, which is the worksheets um, for like writing down your observations. Super simple. Chapter five was fossils. We learned about evolution, um, fossils, how fossils form. Um, we did a cool project with maple syrup and how things got fossilized in, um, in amber, just kind of looking at how that could have happened that was fun dinosaurs um the project at the end of this one was a bag of bones they love doing this you basically use pasta and they form their own um, skeleton model of a dinosaur we used the pasta and we um, pressed our molds into play-doh kids really liked doing that what makes up the earth we learned about the layers of the earth um, different types of um, drilling and earthquakes, volcanoes, and things that happen inside the earth and how scientists measure what's happening. And we did a model of um, the layers of the earth. And we just used Play-Doh and um, a piece of thread 
activity manual, simple stuff, really easy to do. Chapter seven was natural resources. We loved this chapter because we made some paper. Um, the kids loved this project. Um, this was super easy as well. You have newspaper, water, um, metric cups, so just measuring cups, a bowl, a potato masher, a large dish pan, a wire screen, which I did not have, and I ended up using um, a baking rack, worked fine, um, and a dish towel. So we basically made um, new paper out of mush, which we turned newspaper into mush, and then they just reconstructed it into um, paper, and I'll try to pop up a picture here as well. How the Earth Moves is chapter 8. We talked about sunrises and sunsets, um, how the Earth rotates, and then there's a little project with um, just some Play-Doh and a flashlight. We talked about seasons as well. All right, then chapter 9 is how light works. Again, a super simple project at the end where you're just using um, some really basic um, stuff that you have in your house. Um, some chalk and a measuring stick. We actually watched an episode of Curious George where the kids did this and uh, we have done this before, but it was fun to kind of redo this project. Chapter 10, How Matter Changes. Solids to liquids, liquids to gases, five cups, um, foil cups, chocolate chips, crayon, ice cube, margarine, another solid to test activity manual. This is probably one of the longer lists, but again, things that you probably have at home. Chapter 11, how things move. Motion, friction, gravity. So this project is just, um, we haven't gotten to this yet. We have a couple of um, chapters left. Um, so plastic button, eraser, nail, um, metal paper clip, penny, staples, etc. Purpose is to see which items a magnet attracts. Super simple. We have magnet and we have a lot of things that we can just put in there and if you don't have these you can just use plastic things and metal things it doesn't have to be exactly what they suggest and you can still do the process um, the process and um, predicting and observing so the last one is how the body works so this one is one of those chapters that we have um, done before in the past and my kids seem to be the type of kids that like immersion science. They really like to get into a particular um, area of science and then continue to study it. So I am not entirely sure that we're going to continue with BJU. Um, for that reason alone, they really like to get into whatever it is that they're learning about and they want to keep learning. And I just found that with BJU, there's only a little bit of information um, and, and that's it. And that will satisfy most kids. I believe it's, it's perfectly fine for this grade level. But if your kid is one who wants to keep diving into that and learning more and asks a lot of questions, you might find yourself having to get more resource, resources. You might have to get more books. You might have to get a different curriculum. And this isn't cheap. <laughs> um, so just think about that when you're looking at science um, and just feel out what kind of learner your children are. Um, if they're the type of, of children who like to learn little bits and are fine with little projects and then moving on to the next thing, this is a good fit. All right, so I'm just going to quickly show you the, the teacher's guide. Again, um, I really like BJU's um, teacher's guides. Um, I like how they're laid out. They're easy to use. I use um, Bible from them. I've used heritage studies and um, science as well. So the way I use this, because I only had one text, is I actually read out of this text. And then I would just use this right beside me. Um, so I'd use both of these. I'd read out of here and then I would 
introduce the topic that we're going to read about and just follow the instructions here. Um, there's like bulletin board stuff. This is kind of for like uh, school, um, you know, public schools and stuff, private schools. Um, so I didn't do any of that stuff. I just follow what it says. I have this for the chapter questions. I have it for the discussion questions, for vocabulary, um, for any materials I need to ahead of time know about, but really simple stuff. I didn't need to, to look at that. An introduction and then just some more teaching for understanding. So I just use these two things. If one of my kids wanted the textbook, they could have it to read along. And then I have the spread here, the same exact um, thing that they have in their book. Um, I have in mine and the pages match up. So between these two things um, and the activity manual, I think that's all you need to teach BJU science. Um, I will show you the answer key only because it has examples of what the worksheets um, would look like because I don't have all the worksheets anymore. But this will give you just an idea of what the worksheets look like. So these are all the um, observation sheets. They all kind of look the same. And then there's also some learning, um, not learning, uh, I don't know what I was going to say, but just some refreshers and checkups just to make sure that the kids have learned and understand what you went through during the lesson. There's a project. So you get the idea, there's some word problem, not word problems, um, it's late guys, I don't even know what I'm saying. Um, <laughs> check up pages, there's some crosswords. Um, that's what I meant to say, crossword puzzles. There we go. So you get the idea. Um, and that is it. Okay you guys, um, so that is BJU Science 2. Again, really good. Um, but to be honest, we won't be using this again next year. And just as I go through it now and I'm thinking about it, um, we definitely won't be using this, but I wanted to share it with you because although we have used it and enjoyed it, we won't be using it again. This might be something you find super exciting and looks exactly like what you need for your family. And that's why I do these videos. So thank you guys for tuning in. Um, please like and subscribe if you haven't already done so. And I will talk to you in the next video.